Have you ever asked yourself what happened after Pablo Escobar died? Oh, and I don't mean the afterlife or anything like that. I'm talking about what happened to his wife, his daughter that he loved so much, his son, his cartel, and all that money he had. No one seems to talk about these things, and maybe no one cares, but we definitely do. So if you're just like us and you want to find out, well then buckle up, because we're taking you on a trip to Medellin, Colombia to unravel all the happenings that came after the death of Pablo Escobar. Arguably the wealthiest drug lord to ever walk the earth. You don't want to miss this one, so sit tight and let's begin. The day was December 2nd, 1993, and the entire Colombian army was in search of Pablo Escobar. No, that's wrong. Half of Colombia was searching for him. I'm talking about rival cartels, a special force of lethal mercenaries called Los Pepes, and even his own family. They were all diving into the deepest and dirtiest corners of Medellin, looking for Pablo Escobar. Okay, pause. You're probably wondering what the heck did I just say? Well, what I just described for you was the final hour or maybe even 30 minutes before Escobar died. He went into hiding after the Colombian government announced their plan to move him into a standard prison facility. But Pablo, being the stubborn and egotistical man he was, didn't want to go. At this point, the Colombian government and a group of paramilitary who weren't scared to cross the lines of morality and legality just the way Pablo had done, began a nationwide manhunt for him. Now, back to my story. Pablo, for the first time in his life, was celebrating his birthday outside the usual tradition of partying with his family. He needed to speak to his family real bad. He decided to risk it all and put a call through to his son. The Colombian government was able to intercept that call and pin it to a cell tower close to his location. Immediately, they locked on the hideout. They sent the convoy of armed military men with one instruction, shoot Escobar on sight. Pablo Escobar knew that he had probably made the biggest mistake of his life. He tried escaping through the roof of his hideout, but it was too late. The entire building was roaming with soldiers within minutes. That, my friends, was how Pablo Escobar was found and eventually killed on a rooftop like a rat with his most trusted bodyguard, El Limon. His wife, Maria Victoria Henao, felt extremely bad after hearing the news of his death. I mean, if he never placed a call to him, he might have lived longer. With his death, he left behind the Medellin cartel, his wealth, properties, and some very expensive artifacts. But the most prestigious thing he left behind was his family. After his death, members of the Medellin cartel turned to his wife to emerge as the head of the cartel. And that's because while Pablo was alive, they both ran the cartel together, putting her in the perfect position to continue running their affairs. But Maria wasn't cut for all that. In fact, she wanted absolutely nothing to do with the cartel or cocaine. She took her two children, Manuela and Juan Pablo, and flew away across the world to seek asylum in Africa's Mozambique. But the Mozambican government denied her entry into their country. So did the Brazilians and the Germans. No one, absolutely no one, wanted anything to do with the Escobar family. Through a few connections, she was finally able to gain entry into Argentina as a tourist. When Maria and the children entered Argentina, no one knew them, which was a good thing. But the twist is, her name was all over the news as a member of the Medellin cartel, and primarily as the wife of Pablo Escobar. Given the fact that Escobar had killed thousands of people, you don't need a soothsayer telling you that someone, anyone in fact, would be willing to retaliate the same evil on his family. Maria knew this and knew she had to make a tough decision. She decided to get her name changed. She changed her name from Maria Victoria Henao 
to Maria Isabel Santos Caballero. This allowed her and her family to live in peace for the next couple years, until the Argentine government found her in 1999. Eventually, Maria and her son Juan Pablo were arrested in 2000 for charges on money laundering. You've got to feel this woman's pain. After suffering the infidelity and narcissistic acts of Pablo Escobar for 17 years, she was the one carrying his cross even after his death. She was imprisoned by the Argentine government for a couple of months, but after they couldn't tie any links of drug trafficking to her and her son, Maria and Juan were released. Maria went on to live with her family hidden in Argentina for the next two decades before releasing her book, Mrs. Escobar, My Life with Pablo. On the other hand, Pablo's son couldn't live a peaceful life. He changed his name from Juan to Sebastian and released his own book, detailing the soft and kind-hearted side of Pablo Escobar. But that didn't stop people from coming after him. Most Colombians felt he was going to pull off an action movie sequel by avenging the death of his father. But Sebastian didn't like the diabolical things his father did. He went as far as condemning the Netflix series on Escobar, Narcos, saying the series glorified his father rather than condemning the evil he had done. Now, does that look like the kind of man that would want to take revenge? I certainly don't think so. And why would anyone want to take revenge for Pablo? Pablo was responsible for the killing of over 4,000 Colombians. The most sinister of his killings came when he killed over 40 underage girls after one of them reported his cartel's sexual exploitations with teenage virgin girls to the police. Can you even believe that? It's totally insane to think anyone would do a thing like that and Sebastian felt the same. In an interview, Sebastian narrated how he had escaped more than nine kidnap attempts in Argentina. These attempts to kidnap him came after Forbes released a publication stating that Pablo Escobar left behind more than $3 billion. But one thing these people didn't realize is that all that money was left behind in Colombia after Pablo died. That's right. Pablo's $10 billion mansion, the luxurious prison he built for himself called La Catedral, and several other properties he owned were all left rotten in Medellin after his family fled the country. He had billions of dollars he couldn't take to deposit at the bank, so he did a different approach to store that money. I'm talking about stuffing millions inside his furniture burying it underground, and just putting him in places that I bet Pablo himself couldn't even remember. But hey, that's what happens when you're the wealthiest drug dealer on the earth. In his prime, Pablo was responsible for 80% of the cocaine in America. He even went as far as burning a whopping $2 million when his daughter was feeling cold because they had no logs for the fire. Man, just imagine to have that kind of money. Anyways, Escobar's Medellin home before he died, known as the Monaco Building, was blown up with explosives by rival cartels. This building wasn't the size of a football field or as tall as a skyscraper guarded by top security. It was simply just Escobar's home. After the six-story building became deserted, the Colombian government took possession of it and turned it into a tourist attraction for people who wanted to get a glimpse into Escobar's life. However, as members of the community walked past it every day, it was a constant reminder of their loved ones who died at the hands of Escobar. So, in 2018, the government decided to bring down the building and turn the land into a memorial for the victims of Escobar's terror. Another of Pablo Escobar's homes that went down in ruins was his luxurious getaway home in Guatape. It was named La Manuela after his daughter Manuela Escobar and was Escobar's place to take his mind off his business for a little while. The crazy thing about this building is that it got destroyed even before Escobar's death. 
a rival cartel loaded over 200 kilos of TNT explosives, blowing up more than half of that building while Escobar was hiding. A few years later, nature took over that place while scavengers broke parts of the structure in search of any of Escobar's hidden and buried valuables. While we really have no idea if they had any luck, I gotta tell you right now that the biggest of Pablo's properties that he lost after he died was La Catedral. La Catedral is the name of the billion dollar prison he built and customized for himself. It had a casino, a spa, a football field, and other luxuries that totally separated from its purpose. But after Escobar's death, La Catedra turned into La Treasure Island. Nearby residents trooped in and out of that place, scavenging for anything they could find. And from external sources, millions of dollars were actually buried and stashed up both inside and outside of the building's area. But when all that gold digging was done, La Catedra was eventually abandoned until a group of monasteries called the Benictine Monks took over the building and turned it into a holy place of worship and a memorial for the victims of Escobar's works. Now, the big question you probably have on your mind is, what happened to his cartel? The Medellin Cartel. Well, once the king and queen were gone, the entire cartel fell apart. Most of the members were imprisoned, while others were killed in cold blood. A few of the cartel members that were left had to seek refuge with rival cartels, like the Cali Cartel. These rival cartels eventually took over cocaine exportation from Colombia to the US and other parts of the world. But not all of Escobar's fortune was looted or deserted. Before he died, he built schools, hospitals, shelter homes, and other commercial infrastructure for the people of Medellin. While he slaughtered anyone who dared to stand up against him or challenge his authority. And that made his life somewhat paradoxical. On one hand, he was seen as a hero. On the other, he was seen as the devil dressed in Prada. Now, my question to you is, can the actions of Pablo Escobar be justified? Or is he the devil everyone says he is? We have to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now the video showing on your screen right here is just as good as this one. You might want to check that out. I'll see you there.